Okay, so in this video we're checking out the Beta FPV X93 HD. This is the digital version of the X9 series. Uh, I think I reviewed the X9 4 and 5. Those were analog versions previously. There's also a X9 5 HD version of this as well, with basically the X9 5 frame with the same uh, Cadex Vista digital system on top. So basically, if you want to look at how maybe the the digital version of the five inch will fly, it's going to probably fly pretty similar to the analog version. So. I'll link that uh, video down in the description. You guys can check that out. Basically, uh, you just put the Vista on top of there and swap out the analog parts to VTX and the camera, and you basically have the X95. So that's why I decided to review the three inch version of this instead of the five inch version, because I think that would be very similar to the analog version. But they don't have a three inch version of this in analog, at least as far as I know. Maybe it'll come out later, who knows? But the frame in all the X9 series is the same. Uh, they're the same kind of similar, very skinny arms. Obviously to cut through the air, the arms are really thick on this one. They're four millimeters thick. Sandwich plate design, so the arms are separated. And if you break an arm, you can replace individual arms, which is nice. As you can see here, I've got the Crossfire version. And this is how they've got their Crossfire antenna. This is not the Immortal T antenna. This is like kind of their jerry-rigged. And so I think it's using the, like the nano antenna um, and they're using these tubes and 3D printer parts to place the antenna here. Not the best placement, sure people are going to uh, complain about the antenna placement, but um, you know, where else are you going to put the crossfire antenna? <laughs> if you have a better idea, let me know. So pretty simple setup here. So basically you've got the 1404 motors here at 3800 kV. So this is going to run on 4S. They they elected to go with the 12 amp all-in-one flight controller, which goes two to four S, and it does have a capacitor here on the XT30, so mm, probably okay for a lot of voltage spikes. But if you crash this and do turtle mode and stuff, and the props are blocked and can't and the motor can't move, then you might have a, you might send a voltage surge through to the flight controller and pop an ESC because this little tiny capacitor or in here may not be enough. I think it's like a probably a 330 microfarad. Doesn't look that big. So be aware that the headroom there is probably not that big. And then the other thing is the battery lead is not secured that well. I uh, might want to secure it here to the arm with another zip tie. Yeah, if you're worried about a battery ejection and pulling the pads off, but it looks like the uh, those are through holes, so it would probably it'd take a lot to pull those um, wires through that um, solder solder job. And so basically the rest of the system in here is just basically your crossfire receiver, your Vista uh, air unit, and then you've got your uh, DJI camera here on this canopy. Now for some reason, it only has three standoffs on mine. There's a, there's a hole here and a hole here in the canopy. There's no reason that there can't be a standoff here because it's not really, it's not blocking anything. And the USB port's totally accessible. So I think uh, they may have just forgotten to put one on here on mine. Uh, obviously, I think an additional standoff here would be helpful. I'm not sure if they put that, if they removed it on purpose because I haven't seen any other pictures of this with or without the back standoff. So uh, if you happen to have one of these extra ones or if you're missing it, you may want to ask Beta Phoebe to send you one because there's no reason why that can't be there. It's, just, it's only going to help keep this canopy on here in a crash. Um, if, you hard, if you crash really hard, uh, hard to say how, what's going to happen here, but um, these are just M2 steel screws here and steel standoff. The canopy is nice and tough, but you know, in a really hard crash, this canopy might get ripped off. The Vista unit's actually screwed into the canopy. So um, if, the, if the canopy gets torn off the Vista unit and the camera are probably going to go with it and you may end up damaging some solder joints here or some wires. These wires are on a plug over here so I suppose if, if for maintenance if you, if you want to um, you know um, move the Vista off of here for some reason you could just unplug that right there and it'll just come off as a single unit. Okay so here is the weight without any battery. It's coming in 127 grams and flew with this uh, Outline 450 4S. This is a pretty good battery. So altogether we're coming in at 180.9 or 181 grams. And just a little bit more about this battery here. 
uh, way better than the Beta FPV 4S 450. So I rec recommend this one uh, if you're going to be flying this guy here. Uh, this seems to be really optimal and flies really well together. So um, yeah, I'll link this one in the description. Now, in terms of the flight characteristics and everything, I don't know exactly what it is about this particular model. It flies really well. It's really locked in. I looked at the PID tune and it doesn't look like it's anything special. It's kind of close to beta flight defaults and actually it might be beta flight defaults. I didn't actually touch anything. So maybe this design just didn't require a lot of tuning. I'm not 100% sure what's up, but it right out of the box, didn't touch anything. It felt really locked in. And I think it might have to do with the way that this frame is being utilized. So this is a very big frame. It's about 135 millimeters motor to motor, which is big for a three inch. It's, in fact, it's almost big enough to hold four inch props, but not quite. It, basically the four inch props will touch here in the front. So it's a big, big frame with a wide base for a three inch prop setup. Um, but I think that's probably why it flies so stable because you don't have the props so close together, maybe causing turbulence and, you know, causing the motors to not spin at the right RPMs and stuff for the flight controller to do proper pit, you know, to, to properly fly it on the PID tune. That's the only thing I can speculate. I, you know, it flies really, really nice on this setup here. So kind of like looking at maybe, you know, on some frames, putting their smaller props or, you know, going with frames with a little bigger bases uh, with a three inch prop to get that nicer feel. So something to look into in the future, but yeah, that's this out of the box flew great um, without any tuning or any kind of special, you know, uh, tweaking at all. I didn't didn't change anything. I just charged up the battery. I did obviously set my rates and I think I put in uh, my modes on the transmitter, that kind of thing to match it up. And obviously I bound it to my um, transmitter and to the goggles, that kind of stuff, you know, basic stuff there, nothing, no tweaking or any special setup. So. Anyway, so overall, I thought it flew really good, um, and you know it's a bit on the heavy side, but it has big motors, 1404 motors. So in terms of like the weight on this Force 450, I don't think it's really an issue. You can fly pretty fast on this, and it has really good control because everything seems to be locked in on the PID tune. Anyway, so here's the uh, flight footage. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. All right, so this is the uh, factory tune. Fly a little closer so you guys can hear the props. And it's pretty good. I've already flown this a few times. So you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to do a full throttle punch out here. Yeah, even a full throttle. Pretty decent. Pretty good power loops. It's fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Let's fly a little further away here. Give you an idea of what the speed is like. Oh, it's got speed. It's cruising. You guys have seen me fly here before, so you guys know how fast things typically can go here. This is a this is locked in pretty good. I haven't done any uh, tuning on this at all. Probably a lot more flippy floppies than you guys are probably used to. We don't usually fly like this. 
or someone's going to comment that they're going to feel sick from all the floppy floppies. Still at 14.6 volts. I think we can get about three and a half minute flight out of this. This is a 4S450. Same outline battery they've been using. It's a pretty good, comparable to GMBs. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. Pretty good battery. Pretty good flight time. Pretty good power. That thing's really nice. Uh, well, we're actually have close to four minutes of flight time at 14.3 volts, so yeah, three and a half, four minutes, no problem flying like this. And we're just about at the end of the battery here. You can definitely fly longer if you want, if you want to push the battery some more, but I don't like doing that too much. Ooh, almost crashed. Okay, so that's the end of the battery. Yeah, didn't quite have the uh, the voltage to pull out of that little dive there. That's when you know it's time to land. Let me know what you guys think.